This is the ACS Minima uh, and a short video just to show how easy the machine is to use and its simple design philosophy. Um, at the top here you've got a hatch and within it uh, a water tank, it's sort of uh, lifted out, you can see there, and it's got a little lid on it, you just take the lid off and fill it up, very easy, put the lid back. Uh, I actually use, to fill my water tank, I use a container like this with a nozzle, and it uh, makes it very easy to fill the tank. Then there's two switches, one is brew on and off, and if I take the port filter away on and off and I put I, I leave a little bit of grip mat I, I buy grip mat and cut it up and I just leave it on the tray which means it doesn't get scratched under that area and then the machine can be either on in the brew boiler only position so the steam boiler is not on or bring it down and that now is brew and steam boiler on together and now the steam boiler will begin heating. Now I ran that little bit of water out and it's showing me H2O. Can you see it? Just move the, this is H2O there. Now with that the boilers won't heat and the brew switch won't operate anymore to fire up the pump. And what I need to do is fill it with water, so I'll do that. It's as simple as that. There we go. She's full. And as you see, showing the steam boiler and brew boiler temperature. Now I'm going to move the camera because part of what the PID does it flips between brew boiler temperature which is 92-93 oh, it's actually set to 93 but it varies slightly and the steam boiler which currently is 24 and as it's heating will begin to rise. Uh, it's quite a large steam boiler 2.3 litres. Here is a brew pressure gauge. Now, um, this is important because it's located in the top of the group, um, very near. I'll put this lid back to where the coffee is. It gives you a very accurate group pressure, but also cleans up this panel. It used to be in the panel here, and it cleans that up. It means that there's less plumbing inside the machine and less to go wrong, less to leak. And if this gauge should ever fail, and sometimes these brew gauges do go wrong, it's really just unscrew it from the group and screw a new one in. It's a, it's a two, three minute job. So it, it's much, much better to have it on the group. Um, and I've done another video where you can see how you adjust brew pressure. The steam arm is great. It's on a huge looped over curl arm. It'll get into the deepest steam jugs. So that's, that's excellent. You can see the temperature starting to rise in the steam boiler now. It's 26. Uh, these are, are what they call compression valves. And they're great because you can open them. And as long as you don't close them hard, just gently, they don't leak and they don't fail any quicker than any other type of valve. It's if you screw them in too hard that can be problematic. As long as you're gentle with them, they're great. Then you've got, uh, I've got my naked porter filter in here. Um, the last thing, I guess, let's fire downwards a bit, is the drip tray. It's a steel cover, slightly springy, so it doesn't rattle. And then within that, um, polycarbonate, I think it is, tray, which is plastic, um, easy to clean, very, very easy to clean. You just slide off the steel cover. And then this tray just comes away for cleaning. Um, keeps the whole thing very, very easy. And empty, of course. Now, one, one of the things during the development was using a solenoid-operated group. Originally, they couldn't put the gauge on the group because it would be twisted to the left. 
these groups have all been custom drilled just purely so this gauge can actually sit facing directly out with at 90 degrees to the front panel and look good on the group. I like solenoid operated groups with pressure profiling machines and with vibration pump machines. This doesn't have an Ulca pump, it's got um, AR15 vibe pump. Um, gives a nice progressive ramp. It doesn't need the pre-infusion of a mechanical group because it's not a rotary pump. Those give a lot of pressure very quickly and the pressure bumps up so fast. E even with the pre-infusion of an E61, it's only a brief stop at about four bar and then it goes up again and that stop is fractions of a second. This just gives a very nice progressive rise to full pressure with the coffee. And that vents out of here. The other, the, the other reason I like the machine is because you can back flush it with cleaner, that's pulley calf, as often as you want, and you don't have to worry about lubrication because there's nothing in the group that needs lubricating. It's just a solenoid and that's just got a Viton valve seat that's unaffected by um, back flush uh, cleaner. So all in all, very easy group to maintain. All the benefits of an E61 without some of the disadvantages of having all the mechanical mechanism. And under this shroud is the solenoid. It's just a standard um, vent solenoid. You can buy them anywhere. Um, they can be fitted in 10 minutes. You know, very easy. It should it ever go wrong. So that's now heating up. Um, I'm going to make a coffee next, just again to show how the process is very easy. Well, I'm just about to make a coffee, but the first thing I want to do is turn the steam boiler off. Because, uh, sorry, wrong switch. Turn that off, and uh, what will happen? It will come up with the software code, and then the brew boiler temperature. Now I'm going to dry this out. One of the things I um, haven't mentioned is how you change brew temperature, and it's very easy. You can press uh, T1 is brew temperature, T2, so T1 is brew, T2 is steam boiler temperature, T1, press the right hand button, it's 93. If I wanted the coffee hotter, I could go up to 94, 95, or down to 92, depending on what brew temperature I want. I'm going to leave it at 93, and the point to make is, if you do change brew temperature, you've got to really give the machine 10 or 15 minutes to stabilise at the new temperature. You take your coffee into the porter filter, um, basically you know, level it off, Grab a tamper. Now what I do when I'm actually uh, making a coffee, I've weighed the beans in. I weigh the beans out. I put a little flat pad on there. Normally I leave it on. I put my scales on it that allows them to sit properly. Um, I get my glass. It's a bit dirty from my previous coffee, so I'm going to rinse it out. I only had a coffee of about 10 minutes ago, I'll reuse this. Put the port filter in. Pop your glass on. And to make a coffee, I'm in, just take the top switch and just flip it on. The counter will go off here to tell you how long the shot time is. You can see the brew pressure rising, 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 up to 9 bar. It's a Colombian sparkling water decaf. Actually came out quite well. And I'll just wait until I've got about 36 grams of uh, espresso, then I'll add hot water to it to make it into an Americano. So there's 36 grams, 28 seconds. Now I could tighten that grind up a bit on the grinder, if I want to have a slightly longer extraction, but I found that's good for this coffee. And, and really, that's it. It's very, very simple to use when you finish making your coffee. I'll stand it up there. Take your porter filter out, knock your puck out so that it's, it's gone. 
Uh, I clean the grill. And this is what I do. I'm reaching around the camera to do it. I use a little Tupperware container and a group brush. Keeps everything clean. And I brush around the seal. So when I'm making a coffee, I'll go through that process. Take the porter filter and the hot water to the sink. And I rinse everything out. And uh, I prefer a naked porter filter myself because it keeps everything an awful lot cleaner, easier to clean. And that's it. And that machine is now clean. Take my scars away. That's the process of making a coffee, really, on the minima. And there's very little controls to worry about. You, know, you turn a tap to get hot water, you open another tap to get steam, you flip a switch to brew coffee. It, it couldn't be a simpler machine um, to operate. And access to the machine is gained, should you ever need to do any maintenance on it, by uh, four screws on the top. That top lifts off, and two at the back. Then the top will lift off, and you can access the top of the machine for adjusting brew pressure. So that's literally one, two, three, four, five, six screws. If you want the case off completely, there's a screw here, a screw here, and two at the back. So ten screws, and both the top and the entire case will come off for maintenance. And uh, that's it.